What's my electricity bill? How much does it cost to melt metal in the microwave? How much does it cost to burn out molds in a microwave kiln? Well, today we'll find out. If you're new to this channel, I have plenty of videos about microwave metal melting, kiln making, or how to use them to burn out molds on my channel. Let me cast something that I will actually use and it's gonna be one of these press heads or hammers, whatever you wanna call them, that I use when I make my sand molds or silicon carbide molds. Why not make it out of metal? So I printed everything in translucent PLA. I did a horrible job in mixing the plaster for various reasons, but that's not all, I also didn't mix enough, which meant I had to top it up, which is not always the best thing to do, especially if it sets fast. Danny boy. Before I burn out my plaster molds in a microwave kiln, I always dry it in an air fryer first. That's because the plaster contains too much water and if you put it in a microwave kiln without drying, ceramic fiber will get wet, uh, the kiln will get extra hot because microwaves heat the water and the burnout will take forever. So you always want to dry it first. You can use an air fryer, an oven or you can even air dry it that doesn't cost anything. In my case, I use an air fryer. So the air fryer is currently drawing 1356 watts. After 1 hour and 40 minutes drying it in air fryer, it used 0.98 kilowatt hours. Calculating electricity costs can be tricky because you have to read between the lines. In theory, I pay 11 cents per kilowatt hour. That's cheap, right? Yes, but that's without VAT. With VAT, I calculate that it's more like 17 cents per kilowatt hour. Plus, there's also some fixed fees that I have to pay that don't really change. So we'll go uh, with 17 cents. So the air fryer was 0.99 kilowatt hours, so that's pretty much one kilowatt. So that's 17 cents. I'm gonna program my cycle timer to start the burnout the next morning. I'll use 1-8 cycle and the burnout will start at 4 o'clock in the morning. This kind of setup where I plug 100 things into each other is not what I normally do, it's just for demonstration purposes. It's the next morning, it's time to remove some of that molten plastic. It's been eight hours since I started the burnout. But that does not mean that we've been running the microwave for eight hours. The actual time, let's see. One hour and five minutes. This was a longer burnout than I normally would do to be honest. Now let's see, 1.3, 1.4 kilowatt hours. Lowest and the highest, 144. Burning out the mold in a microwave kiln consumed 1.38 kilowatt hours or 23 cents. So I'm gonna melt some scrap aluminum. Let's see how much it weighs.
There's also some metal still left in the crucible. This is not going to be a quick melt because, as I have said before, melting time depends on various factors. For example, the state of your melting chamber, how used it is, the size, the size of the crucible. In this case, this is a big chamber. I could fit a crucible way bigger than this one. And what it means basically is that it will take longer to melt this amount of metal. It would, if it would try to beat any records, I would use a chamber that's smaller, tighter and new. But we are not trying to do that. I estimate it will take between 25 and 30 minutes to melt it in this chamber. I just realized that it's drawing 1337 watts and we've been only microwaving it for almost two minutes. Which suggests that the melting time will be maybe a little bit longer. Why? Because I just finished 8 hour burnout and the mag magnetron is still hot and you can see it in these numbers because normally when it's not hot it would draw 1400 and whatever it was and then later as it gets hotter it drops. The microwave is quite hot so the magnetron is not working on full power so to speak. It doesn't help that it's 30 degrees Celsius. So it's been almost 22 minutes of microwaving and look it's now 1234 watts. Okay it's been 25 minutes let me just have a peek to see how hot is the crucible. Okay yes I don't know if you can see it. Well on the camera it might not look as, as red but yeah this should be probably molten already so let me just change my clothes and let's pour it sometimes I use silicone sleeves and other times aluminum foil I do like the sleeves but the downside when things go wrong and there's metal leaking they will catch fire as you will witness in a moment I was pretty much done with the recording and just as I was turning off one of the cameras the mold burst open. I do have a fire extinguisher under the table but I didn't want to use it because I have dealt with these situations before. If you're new to this channel, no it's not a wooden table, it's a stainless steel table covered with floor tiles and everything basically is tiled and concrete so to speak so there's no panic or anything well the demonstration did not come out the way I was hoping but you know it's probably even better that way we can stretch the video longer good for the algorithm and also, it's good to see mistakes. It's been a while since it happened to me. Whew. Excuse me. What happened? Obviously the mold burst open and the metal escaped. But why? That's the question. The mold was just <laughs> I did not mix the plaster good. And I suspect that what happened was because when I was feeling, when I first mixed the plaster, I didn't have enough. And then I mixed another batch of plaster and I poured it on top. And I bet it just didn't bond together properly. And that's the part what, that probably came loose. Even though the cast was the failure, we have all the data. So at the end, I microwaved for 25 minutes and then I was changing and 
setting up the cameras and whatnot, and it was 29 minutes of microwaving. And that translates into 0.61 kilowatt hours. The lowest was 867 watts and the highest, yeah, look, this is not very high. Melting aluminum consumed 0.61 kilowatt hours or 10 cents. So the total, including an air fryer, burning out mold and melting metal was 2.98 kilowatt hours or in my case, 50 cents. I could make another plaster of Paris mold and we could do it again. But since I got all the data already, I think it's better to move on to another metal because I wanted to do it anyway. So I'm gonna cast it in iron and for that I'll make a mold out of sand. Well, actually I did make another mold, but I messed it up in a different way. Funny enough, 90% of mistakes that I make, I have made before which probably means I should print some kind of list and stick it in a wall that would say, Denny, do not make these mistakes again. Be more careful. What was the mistake? I opened the mold before aluminum had solidified. You only had one job and you messed it up. So I'm gonna use this 82 millimeter mold. I have shared them on my Patreon page. And yeah, let's measure the sand I'll need. 964. So if we add, let's say 7% of sodium silicate that I have kept in fridge at this time of the year, 7% uh, is, what did I say? 900 what? Oh, forgot. <laughs> what was it? 60, 65. Good. So I'm just gonna put it inside of my microwave kiln and I'll run the microwave on a different setting using a cycle timer. Okay, so the microwave is set to 150 watts or the different setting basically, or, or this is different and the lowest setting basically. One, four. Let's see. So it's still drawing. Okay, you see? The magnetron runs on full power very little, just for a few seconds. And look, now it's 20 watts. After around half an hour, I turned up the power to 300 watts, then 500, and then maximum. Two and a half hours later. I need to go. I need to go away for a few hours, so, and I don't want to leave the microwave unattended. So let me just check if I can already, if there's already some plastic dripping. I'm back. I wonder if any plastic has dripped into the tray because of the heat. I was still inside the kiln. Yeah, all right, let's continue the burnout. Later that evening, I finished the burnout. The total time of the microwave running was 58 minutes or 0.91 kilowatt hours. It's the next morning, the microwave is cold, as cold as it can be. It's not as uh, warm today as it was yesterday, so that's uh, always a plus. So I'm gonna melt 406 grams of cast iron. As I have said before, whenever I melt iron, I like to heat the metal with a blowtorch first. It makes the melting process much quicker and easier on your chamber and the microwave. So it's 1,403 watts. Okay. 
I could have microwaved for 5 more minutes as there was still some eye and there was not molten, but it was enough. As soon as the iron had solidified, I removed the aluminum foil so the DC would not start smoking. So we microwaved it for 41 minutes and 21 seconds. So it's 0.86 kilowatt hours. The sand mold I didn't need to dry in an air fryer, so that's a plus. So the burnout used 0.91 kilowatt hours, which translates to approximately 15 cents. And the iron melting took around 41 minutes, 0.86 kilowatt hours, and also 15 cents, plus a little bit of gas for preheating. I don't know how much was that. So in total, 30 cents. When I was sanding it outdoors, the battery on my angle grinder died and I just couldn't be bothered to go back and finish recording it because it just doesn't matter. It's good enough for me, it will serve the purpose. Let's just, let's see if it fits so oh, of course it does. Of course it does. Okay, this has some nice weight to it. I'll use it in my future videos.